Good morning everyone. Now you all know that when acids are dissolved in water, they give H plus ions. HCl, an acid, when dissolved in water, gives H plus ions. Sulfuric acid, yes, when dissolved in water, gives H plus ions. Yes, so ions, I suppose you all remember, are charge, atom or molecule. So when these ions are formed here, and these, yes, when these ions are formed, yes, this process is called as ionization. Now, all acids are not ionized equally in water. The acids which are ionized to a large extent, they are called as strong acids. HCl, that is hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid. They are example of strong acids. Acids which are ionized to a small extent, they are called as weak acid. Formic acid which is present in the sting of bees and ants is a weak acid. Then acetic acid present in vinegar is another example of a weak acid. Then carbonic acid is, an, is also an example of a weak acid. The relative strength of acids can be compared in terms of degree of ionization, also called as degree of disassociation. It is denoted as alpha. Alpha is equal to number of molecules of acid existing as ions upon the total number of molecules of acid. Now, if the acid is strong, yes, then almost all the molecules that they exist as ions and then the value of alpha is nearly 1. So, when the acid is strong, almost all the molecules, they exist as ions, yes, and the value of alpha is nearly 1. On the other hand, if the acid is weak, then only a fraction of the molecules, they exist as ions. Yes, and the value of alpha, it is less than 1. Now remember, acids will only release H plus ions when they are dissolved in water. In dry state or anhydrous state, they will not release H plus ions. That means they will not show their acidic nature. Concentration of acid is quite different from its strength. Concentration means the amount of water present in a particular acid solution, whereas strength is the number of H plus ions which is released by the acid in the solution. For example, HCl will always remain a will always remain a strong acid even if it is dilute. Why? Because it is almost completely ionized in water and the value of alpha is nearly 1. On the other hand, acetic acid will always remain a weak acid no matter how highly concentrated because it is the ions are ionized to a very small extent. Now we come to basicity of acid. Now what do we understand by basicity of acids? Basicity is actually defined as the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms present in an acid which it releases when dissolved in water. Yes, now acids can be classified as monobasic, dibasic, tribasic, etc. depending upon the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms. Remember, hydrogen atoms are replaceable when an acid reacts with a base in an aqueous solution. Okay, now let's understand this 
with the help of examples. We have Hydro dilute hydrochloric acid which reacts with dilute sodium hydroxide to form a salt and water. Now in, in the acid hydrochloric we have one hydrogen atom and this one hydrogen atom is replaceable. So that's why it is called as monobasic. Now let's see acetic acid. Acetic acid has got four hydrogen atoms three here and one here so four hydrogen atoms yes but only one is replaceable so it also comes under the category of monobasic acetic acid reacts with dilute sodium hydroxide to form sodium acetate and water yes now let's see this example here we have dilute sulfuric acid reacting with dilute sodium hydroxide forming sodium sulfate and water now you can see sulfuric acid there are two hydrogen atoms and both are replaceable so that's why it is called as dibasic okay then we come to phosphoric acid yes phosphoric acid reacts with potassium hydroxide to form potassium phosphate and water now you can see phosphoric acid has got three hydrogen atoms and all three are replaceable that's why it is called as tri basic okay now in case you have any doubts in this topic do let me know thank you